Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial for you guys. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 6.8. And Lesson 6.8 is going to be one of your more challenging lessons as we explore fractions. In this lesson we're going to be subtracting fractions, and I should be more specific in saying we're going to be subtracting mixed numbers, and in every situation we're going to have to rename or borrow from the whole number in the mixed number so that we can continue to solve the problem. This lesson requires that you use all the skills and strategies that you've learned in previous lessons in this chapter up until this point and apply them. So we're going to be finding your LCD, your lowest common denominator. We're going to be creating equivalent fractions. We're going to have to change um, fractions from improper fractions to mixed numbers. We're even going to change fractions that are not improper and we're going to make them improper so that we can continue to work throughout the problem. So there's going to be a lot of things going on. So just Take a deep breath, sit tight. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples and then as always, I'll come back with some closing thoughts. Parents, I hope that you're watching this because this is kind of where the rubber meets the road where parents who haven't dealt with fractions in a long time get a little iffy. So this video is especially for you parents out there. So I'm gonna flip the camera around, give you some examples and then I will come back with some closing thoughts. Here we have our first problem. We're gonna take two and a half minus one and five six. The first thing that I want to do in these types of problems is I still want to come up with my estimated answer. I've already solved it or come up with that estimated answer. My estimated answer is a half. And just to refresh our memory, when you're rounding fractions, you're going to round them to three benchmarks. You're either going to round it to zero, a half, or a whole. When I was estimating my answer, there was nothing that I needed to do with two and a half because it already includes the benchmark a half. So this one is perfectly rounded or just where it needs to be. No need to touch that one. In terms of estimating this one, I'm going to look at my fractional part. I'm going to compare my numerator of 5 to my denominator. And since 5 on a number line is relatively close to 6, the most logical way for me to round 5, 6 would be to round that to one whole. So I would take this as a whole plus that whole there and 1 and 5, 6 would be rounded to about 2. Then I'm going to take 2 and a half minus 2 and that leaves me a half, which is where I got my estimated answer from. So now that that's taken care of, we're gonna get into the business of how do you solve this problem in this particular lesson. So you are gonna look just at your fractional parts first. You recognize that you have two unlike denominators. You have a two here and a six here. In this particular case, since we're gonna to have to do some renaming of these fractions, right now I don't want the least common denominator. I know that the least common denominator right now is six, but right now, what I really want is just a common denominator. And the book taught us to find a common denominator, you would just multiply your two denominators. So two times six is 12, which tells me my common denominator is going to be 12. So that is what I'm going to use when I start creating my equivalent fractions. Now keep in mind, since I only have a limited amount of space to work on camera, I'm gonna be erasing and working as I go. But when you're doing these problems on your own, you don't wanna erase your work. You just wanna take it one step at a time and leave all your work present. So I'm gonna erase this just so I have some room. I don't know why I erased the whole problem, but we'll rewrite it. So it's two and a half. We're subtracting one and five six and i've just said that my common denominator is going to be 12. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my two fractions and i'm going to manipulate them so that they both have a denominator of 12. so what i like to do just to save a little bit of time is i'm going to go ahead and extend that fraction bar out and that fraction bar out because i know i'm going to be using some multiplication i know that i need to multiply six times two to get 12 and whatever is done to the denominator must be done to the numerator. And so instead of dealing with one and five, six there, my new problem is going to be one and 10 twelfths. Then I'm gonna work with the second problem or the, the other fraction or mixed number. I have two and a half. In order for me to have a denominator of 12, I need to multiply two times six. Whatever is done to the denominator must be done to the numerator. So I'm gonna multiply that by six as well. And now, instead of dealing with two and a half, I am now dealing with two and six twelfths. So this will be my new problem. 
I'm no longer dealing with that problem there. That one no longer exists. I've created my equivalent fractions and now I'm gonna continue from there. So now, oh, I gotta put my subtraction sign so I don't forget that I'm subtracting. So this is the new problem that we're dealing with and you should immediately recognize and tell yourself, okay, well I have like denominators now, but now I still can't subtract because I have six minus 10 and six is too small of a number. I, I don't, we can't end up with negative fractions. There's no such thing. So now you have to think, well, what can I do with this problem so that I can go ahead and subtract? So in this strategy, we are going to rename your first mixed number. So we're going to change things around in two and six twelfths just so that we're able to actually subtract 10 from it. You're not gonna rename the second one in this example, you're just gonna rename the first one because this is what you're subtracting from. So in order to do that, I'm going to rename or borrow from my whole number, which is two. I'm going to cross my two out and I'm gonna make a one there because I'm borrowing one whole from the two. Now I'm going to convert that one whole that I borrowed from the two into a fraction. And hopefully at this point that you know that anytime your numerator is the same as your denominator, that represents one whole. So the one that I just borrowed here is now being represented over there as 12 twelfths. Then I'm going to add those two fractional parts together. So 6 twelfths plus 12 twelfths is going to equal 18 twelfths. And what you should recognize, as I move my board just a touch, what you should recognize is now that that is 18 twelfths, I can actually subtract 10 twelfths from that. So now your new problem, I'm gonna rewrite what's over here, over here so that we can keep ourselves clear. Now my problem is going to be one and 18 twelfths and I'm subtracting one and 10 twelfths from that because I did some renaming over here because originally the fractional part of that mixed number was too small. I borrowed one whole from the whole number two and I converted that whole into a fraction by renaming it as 12 twelfths. So now I can subtract. I'm gonna look at my fractional parts. 18 minus 10 is going to equal eight my fraction or my denominator is gonna stay the same, which is 12. One minus one is zero, so there is nothing I need to do there. I'm just gonna leave that spot blank. But I do know that that is not in simplest form. Um, the greatest common factor between eight and 12 is going to be four. Four can go into eight two times, and four can go into 12 three times. I'm gonna check just to be sure and I know that two thirds is in simplest form because three and two are both prime numbers so they have no common factors besides one. So I know that everything is okay and it's correct. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is then remind myself to check this against my estimated answer. My estimated answer said that I should get an answer around one half. And when I look at two thirds, two thirds is very close to being a half. Half of three would be 1.5, and two is very close to 1.5, so I can feel good and know that I am on the right track, my answer is probably correct, and that my answer is absolutely reasonable based on my original estimate. So in this example, you only renamed the first mixed number. You only renamed the mixed number that you were subtracting from. In the second example, we're gonna rename both of your mixed numbers and use that strategy to solve, to, uh, to solve a problem that involves the subtraction of mixed numbers. Okay, so we are gonna deal with the same problem. We're still gonna take two and a half and we're gonna subtract one and five six from that one. In this particular case, in this strategy, you're gonna take both of your mixed numbers and you're gonna change them both to improper fractions. Now I know in times past I've said we do not want improper fractions, but in this case, improper fractions will actually help you. So it will be a benefit to you in this type of problem to actually have improper fractions because they make solving this possible. Before you do any of that though, you still need to recognize that right off the bat, you have two fractions that have different denominators. So the first thing that you wanna do is create equivalent fractions. 
When you're creating equivalent fractions, in this case, you wanna look for your LCD or your least common denominator. And as a fifth grader, you should recognize that the least common denominator between two and six is going to be six. Once you figure that out, you should be able to say, yay, I don't need to do anything with that mixed number because the denominator is already six. This one, however, I need to do some multiplication because it does not have a denominator of six right now. So using my basic facts, I know that two times three is going to be six. I know from what we've learned in this chapter so far that whatever happens to the denominator must also happen to the numerator. So two and a half will now be read as two and three sixths. That is going to be an equivalent fraction. Since one and five sixths was just fine, I'm just gonna move that over. And now I'm dealing with two and three sixths minus one and five sixths. And this is where changing them to improper fractions comes into play. You should recognize that you cannot subtract five from three. There is not enough in three for you to subtract five. So you're gonna solve that problem by creating two improper fractions. When you have a mixed number and you need to convert it to an improper fraction, you're gonna take your denominator, multiply it by your whole number part. Take the product of that and add the numerator. So anytime I'm doing that, I always make this little diagram because that tells me multiply your denominator by your whole number, add the numerator to the product. So if I wanna change two and three six to an improper fraction, I'm going to do six times two, which is 12, and 12 plus three is 15. So two and three six as, a, or as an improper fraction will be written as 15 over six. Down here, one and five six, I'm gonna do six times one, which is six. Then I'm gonna add five to the product, six plus five, that equals 11. So one and five six, written as an improper fraction, is going to be 11 over six. Now you should realize, okay, great, I can subtract these two. So let me move this out of the way and rewrite this as a subtraction problem and then everything becomes much easier. So you now have 15 over six minus 11. You should recognize all you need to do is take your numerators and subtract them. 15 minus 11 is going to be four and your denominator is going to remain six. You're gonna first recognize that that is not in simplest form. I know that's not in simplest form because both of those are even numbers, so I know they're both divisible by two. Two can go into four two times and two can go into six three times. And you should realize that that is the exact same answer that we got in the previous example. I already know that that is close to my estimate because we discussed that in the first problem. And therefore I can feel confident that my answer is more than likely correct. So those are your two examples. I don't wanna to provide too many examples because this video could be quite lengthy, um, but I am gonna flip the camera around and give you some closing thoughts on today's lesson. So those were your examples on subtracting fractions and actually mixed numbers using some renaming. And we looked at two strategies. The first strategy involved you just changing one of your fractions to an improper fraction so that you can continue throughout the process of solving the problem. And the second strategy involved you taking both of your mixed numbers, changing the fractional part to improper fractions, and then that allowed you to continue to finish the problem as well. As Always the most important thing that you wanna do or remember as you're doing these problems is you always wanna start by getting an estimated answer because that allows you to know if your final answer is reasonable. When you feel like you have solved the problem and you were done, you're gonna ask yourself, first, is my answer in simplest form? Then you're gonna ask yourself, after you've guaranteed that it's in simplest form, does my final answer somewhat come close to my estimated answer? Is it relatively close? And if it is, you know that chances are you solved it correctly, but if it's way off, something's gone wrong somewhere and you need to go back in there and figure out where you took a step in the wrong direction and fix the problem so that you don't get the answer wrong. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it is, please give it a thumbs up because that is the only way that I know that you are finding these videos helpful. I don't allow comments because I can't monitor the comments. So if you're wondering how come we can't just comment, that's why. Um, if you're a parent or a student, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you know when I've uploaded the latest math video. And aside from that, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.